Hey everyone, uh, I am getting ready to leave my house and walk out and look at the clouds right now. So I'm taking you with me. So today I'm focusing on the clouds and I want, you can't really see it here because there's so much, um, so many trees. But if you were to focus on the, on the clouds out in here, they're much further away than the clouds overhead. And you can see that by the size of this cloud overhead. And so um, Edgar Payne really shows this in a wonderful way, um, the way we have aerial perspective. So look at the clouds in the background here. They look much smaller, but they're really not. So if I go overhead, excuse the wires here, you can see this cloud, which is much closer because the sky comes over us like this in an arch. So look up here at this cloud, see how large it looks and it's overhead. So that would change the shadow of it as well. And I'll show you that in some of Edgar Payne's work. Well, here I am in the studio and I have gotten a painting ready to put clouds in. The clouds are not painted yet. So I just wanted to get most of the block in done. Um, and then I could just focus in on doing the clouds in this video. But I wanted to read you one thing from uh, John Carlson's book. He says, arrange and draw clouds with a coming from somewhere. And so that's what I've tried to do here. Now these clouds, as I was talking earlier, I talked about the sky or the atmosphere as this in kind of inside of a sphere. And so um, think of these clouds as being the larger ones um, or the ones that look larger up above and then your smaller clouds in here, they're at a distance. So they look smaller because they are more distant. So these will be warmer in tone and also you're seeing the underside. So you'll see more shadow on these um, and then the colors will be warmer in this cloud than in these clouds. So there are two different things going on in here. There's the shape and the perspective of the clouds, but also the motion of the clouds. I'm going to talk about five key points I wanna make when painting clouds. Number one, the shapes, the masses or pattern. And we arrange those uh, with movement and distance. And then we, number two, we draw the shapes with perspective. Number three, the motion depends on the wind, the point of wind. Number four, the values of the clouds, so light and shadow. And number five, color choices that show that value. And all of these points, one through five, are interdependent. They're happening because of each other. And so I will go over these five points in this video. So I've spent some time here working on mixing up some cloud color and I will do more of this, but um, you need to understand that the photograph isn't really telling me the truth about the colors of the clouds. And so you need to observe clouds for a while to be able to see these colors coming through. And you can make notations in your sketchbook about the colors you're seeing as well. That's the beauty of having a study to go by. Uh, to do a study outside, even if you don't get it finished, you'll still have colors down. This is my photo I'm following, but it's not a good representation of the cloud colors that were overhead. Um, the darks of the clouds you want to remember are lighter than the ground plane. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
remember I said that my darks were going to be warmer in the clouds that were above my head. go ahead and um, go beyond my uh, drawing a little bit on those clouds because I want that feathery look on the edge and it will show a little darker uh, because in here you'll, you can see a little bit of darkness where um, the white is coming into the blue and it becomes more trans transparent. trying to show movement here. First was working on my pattern, uh, my, my drawn perspective of the clouds, cooler white for um, the clouds down here. away from us, I can add more of a cooler white. And you can see how it kind of blends outward.
getting back to my five points. Um, when I drew this in, I was working with uh, the shapes and the perspective. So I had covered that. I drew the shapes with, um, with this idea of motion and coming down this way. I also drew them with aerial perspective. Three was that motion. That's that motion part of it. Um, and that's what I've been working on, uh, painting this with motion. And then four, the light and the shadow and working in here with light and shadow, going back and forth with it um, to show that it is backlit. I have the shadow here. It's backlit or top lit in this case. And um, then working with um, different colors in the shadows. Five is the color, different colors in the shadows and also the color of this affecting the scene. I want to give the clouds more form, really model them. They, they are what this painting is about. So I went away and then came back today. Um, so this is, this sat overnight a little bit, um, and gave me a chance to do some study, look at some other works of art and then decide where I needed to change. This was too cool. So I'm using some, some of this yellow here, which is my cooler yellow in this mixture. So I, I've mixed up um, some different colors here, a little warmer. And so I'm, what I'm doing is think in terms of the uh, impressionists and how they would lay color next to one color next to another to show it grading. This is sort of a muted greenish tone. So rather than blending right now, that's sort of the, the way I'm working with this, grading it. It'll be a little different down here, a little cooler. I haven't mixed those tones yet, really. And then this is this one is under that one. Could go a little bluer. Or purplish and on there because it's it's underneath showing it to be behind the other. So and then this is sort of a, a brownish, uh, kind of a muted pinkish brownish tone next. And I was just uh, going on uh, what I, how I thought these would grade. I want to cool that shadow off a little bit in that cloud. This is a sky that has a lot of movement and um, darkness to the clouds. So these two clouds really look identical in nature. And I didn't really want to repeat a shape, but there is a pattern to this sky. And you will see that in skies. Um, so let me see what I can do to change it up a bit. allow that to be bigger. Let that cloud be bigger up here and change the shape a bit like that.
Okay, that helped with the shape of things. Um, this needs a little variation inside the cloud. Okay, another thing to think about here is uh, cloud shadows. And if if I feel like I need more shadow on the land, I need to put that in. Um, it really helps to describe the scene. And I did add more. I'm just gonna look at this and see. I might bring more of a shadow in here just to describe that a little bit. So, um, definitely getting a shadow here and then um, to go ahead and bring that across Want to make sure I'm handling it in the right way. So this would be causing this shadow here. Quite dark enough. Doesn't really need to be quite as blue as what I made it because I did warm up the scene. So
Okay, so the clouds at this point have much better form now. Um, I like that better, and I like that it's not so dark in the shadow. I wanted to add more uh, color into that, which I did. This is one of those clouds that has a silver lining. I'm going to try the palette knife a little bit here. I can smooth it out a little bit, but I just really want to get that very light. This painting might not ever dry. <laughs> You don't, want to, you don't want to lose the look of vapor in a cloud. It's a part of the atmosphere. It's atmospheric and has, it's made up of vapor. That, that really helped. You can see where you can use that. Now I need a little more on this edge as well. shows you that point of wind. Well, I have defined these clouds more, given them more structure. I've been going back and forth between using the palette knife and using a soft brush, using a smaller brush a little bit of the time to help me define things. Um, so the different brushes and tools are good for different things. I actually did some palette knife work on the sky the blue parts as well. So I, I kind of like it. It's um, It's got a an abstract feeling to it um, and a design up in here, a pattern design. So one thing you can do for the perspective of your clouds is pretend that you're drawing a road up in the sky. You're just looking up rather than looking down with the um, perspective when you're drawing that in. Edgar Payne said that clouds and marines are the hardest kinds of things to paint and draw because they're constantly moving. Definitely go and, and study other artists' work and how they handled the clouds. I enjoyed uh, looking at Maynard Dixon's uh, way that he painted and drew clouds. This morning I was looking at some of his work with clouds and uh, he definitely uh, drew it out and designed it himself. Uh, Edgar Payne said to uh, use your visual memory with the clouds and, and draw them out and work on um, your design elements and make it make your statement by how you're drawing it out. I hope you enjoyed this painting and hope you get out and try it yourself. Thanks for watching. This is Lise Nielsen, Artist in the Woods.